Will Prowse just released a video where he was showing a Battleborn battery that had an internal issue that was causing it to arc. And that made me think, you know, the single biggest point of failure for any DIY setup is trouble at the terminal. Either the wrong size lug, the wrong size cable, or poorly done connections. So I thought today's the day to go back to basics. So especially if you're new to DIY, I'm going to show you how to properly size your cable and how to take cable and lugs and make your own cables. It's going to be more efficient, more effective, and less expensive. So that's what we're going to dig into today. So now to begin with, you can buy these pre-made just like this. But you know, what if um, it's just too small? Or what if you go the other route and it's too big and you got a bunch of stuff? So you're going to quickly realize as you get into DIY that it is more convenient and cheaper to make your own cables. So where do you begin? Will you begin by sizing them? Every cable has a specific gauge to it that can take a specific amount of amperage. It has a certain amount of capacity. And every system you make, no matter how big it is, no matter what the voltage is, also has an amount of current in amps going through the system. So you want to make sure your system and your cable are matched. If you don't and you undersize your cables, the cables are going to get really hot because that energy can't go through the cable properly. So you're going to get a lot of heat. Heat causes problems. If nothing else, it's just going to be wasted energy in the form of heat. Worst case scenario, you're going to start a fire. So you really have to match them properly. Now, I'm not going to go over every possible gauge. I'll put this graphic here. I'll put it below. It's a good reference. We are going to be pretending that we're building a system that is 100 amps, which means we're going to be using a two-gauge cable. That's perfectly matched for our system here. Once you've properly sized your cable, the next thing you got to do is properly size your lug. And always use pure copper lugs. We're going to be using this brand. This is a brand I've used forever. No, I'm not sponsored. I bought this myself. I just happen to like this brand. I've been using them forever. But you want to make sure that your copper lugs also match your system. For example, this is a 2 aught lug. Remember, this is a 2-gauge wire. Now, it'll fit, but it's just too big. Now, same with your terminals. These are M8s. This is a 3 8 pole. So it will fit, but see how sloppy that is? It's just going to move around. That's not a good connection. That's going to get loose, and when it's loose, it's going to cause heat, and heat can cause fire. So you want to make sure that you use the proper size gauge and the proper size terminal. This is 5 sixteenths. You want to make sure you use 5 sixteenths. It's a perfect match. So now that we got the basics out of the way, I'm going to show you how you make this out of this and this. First, I'm going to show you something to never, ever do. I already talked about using one that's too big. Like, for example, this is a 2 aught. We need a 2 gauge, so don't do that. But you also don't want to go the other way and use one that's too small. Now, this one is 5 sixteenths. It fits fine. So you think, well, what's the problem? Well, this is for a four gauge wire. So what you do not ever want to do is derate it by removing some of the wire and forcing it in. You don't ever want to do that. That is the single biggest problem you're ever going to run into. So even though you have a two gauge wire, you have derated it. You've made it so it can't take the proper amount of current and it's going to just be a utter nightmare. So always use the proper size lug. This is a 2 gauge and it's 5 sixteenths so it's going to be perfect. So now I'm going to show you how to crimp them on. So to make the cable you of course need the cable. You need the proper size lug which we just talked about. We're going to use this tool to strip back the sheathing or protective covering of the cable. We're going to use this. This is a hammer crimper. To crimp the end on and of course we're going to use a hammer hit the hammer crimper and then at the end we're going to put this heat shrink on to give it a nice clean look. So now you just eyeball it. You want to make sure you cut enough of the sheathing or jacket so you don't have any of that stuck underneath your copper but you don't want to do it a bunch so you have like an inch of bare copper showing. So just kind of eyeball it and you just push this up with your thumb. There's a little blade in there. 
on the cable. Now, how many times you turn it just depends on the thickness of your cable. We don't want to overdo it because we don't want to derate the wire. There's the cable. And we're going to slide this on. Now you want to twist it. Just be real careful and make sure you get all of those little wires in. Twist it down. All of the wires are in. You see we just have a little bit of the copper showing. That is nice. And we're going to hit it with a hammer. Now I'm going to take this over to my anvil because if I do it on my table here, I'll break the table. So that's our final product. When you're putting the heat shrink on, you want to make sure you don't put the heat shrink on the actual flat part here. And I've seen some pre-made ones where this black is covering up here. Another thing is this is a negative cable, so I use black. If this was a red, like for example, if it was this, I would use red on there just to keep it consistent. I personally love using the hammer crimper. Some people swear by a hydraulic crimper, uh, which you can definitely use. They feel that they make a better crimp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this open now, and we'll see what it looks like. We'll see how good of a crimp we made. So there it is cut open. Um, it looks really good to me. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, the trick is, is you want to make all of those strands into one solid unit. Uh, yeah. I think it looks perfectly fine. If anybody out there has a uh, different method for making cables, I'd love to hear your story. If anybody has any questions about what you've seen, please leave a comment below. As always, like, comment, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Talk to everyone soon.